Hello once again and welcome back to thedrinker.co.uk. I'm Pete Turner and welcome to this little celebration of sherry. These are the wines of sherry. We've got six different styles uh, from Hereth and around that way. There are others, uh, but this should give us a good grounding into the, the key styles of sherry. Um, so we're dealing with wines that come from southern Spain. You think about right at the bottom of Spain, not as far south as Gibraltar, but not far off. Uh, inland in Jerez and then also some from San Luca de Barrameda which is by the sea just north of Cadiz um, and we're talking about two key grape varieties Palomino and Pedro Jimenez quite often shortened to PX. So I'm going to start off with a Manzanilla and I'm going to talk a little bit as we go along about the way that these wines develop and when they're when they're made. So Manzanilla is made at San Luca de Barrameda, which is by the sea. And the sea has a moderating effect on uh, the temperature. So it's not so hot in the summer and it's not so cold in the winter there. And that's very important because as these wines age in a barrel, a, um, a layer of yeast develops on the surface of the wine and that yeast is called floor. Now it can be quite thick, this, uh, this layer of yeast, and it stops the air getting to the wine. So it stops it aging oxidatively, which is why they're so lovely and pale. And in San Luca de Barrameda, because of the sea and because of the influence, the, the temperature is more consistent. That floor is, a, is uh, active all year round. Um, and that means that the, the, uh, the yeast in that uh, layer of bacteria there are consuming all of the sugar that's in the liquid and the more they consume the stronger the alcohol gets and the more they consume uh, the drier and drier and drier uh, the the wine gets so this is possibly the driest wine you will ever taste if if uh, if you've never tried a manzanilla before trust me when you first taste it you probably won't like it it's going to be a wine that takes some time to get into but my word it's worth that investment so on the nose, this is Manzanilla, and it's already got a, as you'd expect, quite a yeasty sort of bakery kind of nose to it. Fresh bra uh, baked bread. Mm. And it is dry and austere, and it has quite a salty finish. People think it has a salty finish because it's from the seaside. It isn't. It's because that layer of floor is active all year round. So it's got a little bit of, I want to say a little bit of chamomile in there, a little bit of lawn, uh, and it's, it's it, but it's super austere. But by God, it works really well with olives, um, with uh, hamon, iberico hamon, um, with almonds, and it is got, it's got a little almond tang to it. So really lovely, lovely wine. That's Manzanilla. Its sort of younger sister is Fino. So this is Fino, the, the big variety of Fino in the UK is Tio Pepe, always, always excellent. And again, it's got that yeasty nose, but it, again, it's a, a little bit more open, a little bit more sort of floral and uh, almondy on the nose. And it's dry again. And and yeah, the breadiness is still there and it's light and fresh and there's some really lovely acidity to it. So it's quite zingy and quite uh, eye-opening. Again, both of these wines should be chilled when you serve them. Um, I chill, chill all of them. Some of the sweetest uh, sort of styles people say don't bother, but I, I kind of like them all chilled. But that cold on a, on a hot summer's day um, or before your Boxing Day dinner is, will be a, a beauty. Again, it's not a very approachable style. You'll need to invest some time in getting to like these wines. So that's Manzanilla and Fino. So the next uh, wine we have here is an Amontillado. Amontillado, again, it's, these are all Palomino, these grapes, uh, the grapes for these wines. Um, it does have this layer of floor, um, but it sort of dies back during the process. Um, and that's why it goes a little bit golden in color. Um, as soon as the oxygen can get to the wine, it's a bit like when you bite an apple and leave it on the side, it goes brown. But over many, many months, this goes a darker colour and immediately becomes more complex. Um, and whereas these were sort of almondy, this becomes more hazelnut. And there's a little bit of sort of floral aromatic to it. There's a little bit of, I want to say, dried herbs, like dried herbs to Provence. Mm. And again, it's dry and quite austere, a little bit salty, 
but it's complex and it's wet wood uh, in a good way and it's beginning to be something else it's got this sort of tertiary development about it so that's um, the Amontillado and we'll flip over from the Amontillado to Oloroso which again is a darker darker wine um, and this doesn't have the flaw in it at all so the, the it gets fortified at quite a young age um, and they pour neat grape spirit into it takes it up to about 17 percent in alcohol and the um, the floor yeast can't live at, the, at that high level of alcohol so it's only ever seen oxygen it's and that's why it's that color and again it's it's woody and um, it's got a little note of um, like a wooden floor that's just been polished in an old country house it's it's that kind of um, and we've gone almond hazelnut this is much more walnut it's deeper and it's um, a little bit resinous and lovely and it's rich and generous and it's it's really refreshing and it's dry still so all four of these wines all Palomino is the great variety and the next one is Palomino so the next one is an Oloroso that's had some Pedro Jimenez added to it so this is what we call in the UK a cream sherry so you'll know this is Harvey's Bristol cream style sherry the kind of sherry that you put in a trifle but please don't just put it in a trifle please do take it as a drink it's a it's a lovely drink so it's going to be semi-sweet because the Pedro Jimenez is really sweet and again it's got that sort of uh, Oloroso base um, but it's got it's got some dry woody notes dried fruit uh, on the nose mm. and the sweetness immediately opens up in the mouth and it becomes uh, fig and damson not damson uh, fig and raisin and and it's warming and generous and you can kind of see why cream sherries are so popular in the UK at Christmas it's very figgy pudding it's very Christmas uh, Christmas cake it's very spicy lovely wine lovely lovely wine and then last of all this is Pedro Jimenez and I don't know if you can see it's just Pedro Jimenez on its own but it really coats the glass it's syrupy and viscous and if you've never tasted it before it's it's astonishing and immediately on the nose it's sort of licorice and intense and syrupy um, black syrup um, and medicinal mm. and it coats the mouth and it's sweet and intense and ripe and and honestly it makes your fillings ache it's such a sweet drink it's lovely um, people pour it straight over vanilla ice cream because it's uh, it's it works so well like that uh, as a drink or oh, you just want to rub it on your chest when you've got a cold it's beautiful and intense and medicinal and that is Pedro Jimenez so there you go uh, a bit of a whistle stop tour through the key uh, styles of sherry do uh, spend some time uh, getting to know these wines with particularly with the, the Manzanilla and the Fino buy a bottle have a glass put it in the fridge have a glass before Sunday dinner you'll hate it do the same open it on Monday have a glass before Monday dinner you'll hate it Tuesday Wednesday Thursday by Friday you'll love it it's it's everything that really is is sophisticated in drinking and sherry is always about to be the next big thing well let's hope it is going to be the next big thing because they're beautiful beautiful world-class wines very affordable and they are from everything from the very driest thing you've ever tasted to the very sweetest thing you've ever tasted so do go get yourself a bottle of sherry not just for christmas sherry is for life and enjoy international sherry week good drinking